Hey, hi guys, so this is an issue or a question that comes up quite a lot. Um, you know, when I've got new clients that may have, you know, done things such as yoga or Pilates or, you know, been to other physios or whatever it may be, the glute bridges, there always seems to be a bit of a confusion as the best way or the best technique for doing glute bridges. And what I'm talking about specifically here is whether you should sort of, you know, um, some people call it sort of peeling your spine off the floor. Other people just call it like a pelvic tuck. So if I'm in a sort of on the floor here, so if we call this sort of neutral position, so there's a little bit of a gap between my lower back and the floor, and then sort of rolling, if I sort of roll my spine or drive my spine to the floor and sort of tuck my pelvis, the argument is that if you get into that position, it's easy to squeeze your glutes to do a glute bridge, which it is. Um, so obviously, you know, that's a benefit of doing it is it does make it easier. However, there are some trade-offs that I would say um, would make tucking your pelvis um, less than ideal, especially for people who've got a history of lower back pain. So first thing is obviously you understand mechanics of things like disc bulges and herniations and, you know, in some cases, sciatica, things like that. We know that excessive flexion, so rolling or rounding of that lumbar spine, like you would do if you were driving it into the floor, trying to peel the spine off the floor, that's how you create excessive wear and tear on the spine. Now, some people have got more tolerance to that and some people have got less tolerance to that, but I would say either way, what we want to do is, is whatever that finite amount is, so you know, think of it like a bank account, you want to save that for the times that you can't control it. So say, for example, you know, you're a parent with young children and you know, the kid rides the bike and falls and you have to sort of pick them up very quickly or you're putting a, kid, you know, a screaming child into a crib, things like that. You know, save that bank account for those times we can't control it. What we don't want to do is we don't want to waste it on the exercises that are supposed to be rehabbing our back pain. Because obviously if I, if I, if I roll in, and I'm doing this every single rep, rounding that lower spine and going into flexion, I'm just needlessly draining that bank account. And now, you know, that, that's what exposes me to the times where I can't control it, that it's gonna, you know, the bank account's gonna get to zero, go into overdraft, and that's what's gonna give me a flare up. So what we need to do, non-negotiable, is do the rehab exercises in a way that's gonna help the problem, not make the mechanics of the problem, you know, the underlying problem worse. So again, if you're flexion tolerant, because you've got disc issues, you don't want to be slipping into flexion trying to do rehab exercises because that's just not only counteracting what you're trying to do with the exercises, the benefits of them, you're actually potentially making yourself, you know, the underlying issue a lot worse, which I mean, I've seen a few times. The other things we need to think about is the law of specificity. So, you know, how we train or what we train for is, you know, dictates the things that we get good at or, or the techniques how we get good you know, learning certain movements and techniques. So for example, if you put yourself into this kind of flex position to squeeze your bum, because it makes it easier to squeeze your bum, you're then gonna try and carry that over into other things where you need to use your glutes and your hips. Like you certainly wouldn't try and deadlift by tucking your stuff into a lumbar, you know, into lumbar flexion and trying to deadlift a weight off the floor. You'd just be too dangerous, far too dangerous. Same with things like squats as well. You wouldn't do like a weird like pelvic tilt and try and hold a squat. So from that regard, let's say you're not flexion or haven't got lower back problems. Why would you now ingrain a faulty mechanic just in order to use your glutes? Would it not be better to learn a more back sparing mechanic, which will allow you to keep a more stable core and spine and still be able to use your glutes you know, as strongly as possible. I think that would be long term, that'd be the best way to do it. So rather than trying to take a shortcut to make it easier to squeeze your glutes, let's think about getting the, the right mechanic. It may be harder initially, but then later on, that will have much more direct carryover into how you want to squat, deadlift, do a kettlebell swing, you know, pick a child up from the floor, or whatever it may be, without having to risk putting you back into a weakened position or less than an ideal position at least. So instead of tilt or like peeling the spine off the floor or tilting your bum, you know, tilting your pelvis, whatever you want to call it. There's two other ways that we can improve the ability to, con to contract the glutes. Because for a lot of people, they have, you know, a bit of what we call glute amnesia. So it is hard to get in there. So what are two other ways that we can uh, help improve that situation? So before we even think about those two tips, first thing to do is just to check your setup. So what I will do is be on the floor, just make sure 
So I like to put my hands by my side. I can almost just about touch my heels with my fingers. That gives me a starting point and I can fine tune from there. So this isn't necessarily a tip, which is just a, you know, a good technique or sing up for a good technique um, tip, I guess. So if your feet are too far away, you're more likely to feel it in your hamstrings, which is a massive no-no for this exercise. That's like the worst thing to feel is your hamstrings. So you always wanna make sure it's the glutes. Um, next worst thing to feel really is, is your quads. And that's usually if people have the feet in way too close, they'll feel it in here as they're trying to, trying to extend up. Um, so if we have it here, set like this, that's a good starting point. Then you can sort of fine tune a little bit forward, a little bit back, whatever you may need. The other thing as well as with your feet, rather than have your feet dead straight, I would turn them out sort of five degrees or so. But again, if you want to play around with that, you can do. Now, the two biggest tips I'd say um, that people sort of don't, I've never really seen people sort of teach or use when talking about sort of glute bridge technique. Number one, um, which I've definitely never seen from you know, most people, is thinking about rather than just having your, sort of your feet just kind of loosely flapping around on the floor and doing God knows what, Think about your feet, but like hands, sort of try and grab the floor. I don't mean just like with your toes, so your, your feet come off like this. I mean, actually, your whole foot, try and squeeze the floor. So your big toes connected, the balls of your feet connected, and your heel are well connected. So sort of grab the floor like that. So that, in itself, gives you a nice stable base to work from. Obviously, the more stable base we've got at the foot, the easier it is to use our hips correctly. So grabbing the floor first, then thinking about tensing the glutes and then slowly squeezing for the glutes. Already, that gives us a better chance of being able to squeeze the glutes without having to resort to peeling the spine off the floor, going into pelvic tilt. So the next one we can use is we can use a band. So at first, this seems kind of counterintuitive because we're, we're adding resistance to a movement we're not very good at, which again is you know, not the obvious choice normally you would add resistance to a movement you've already learned the basics of. But in this case, and you know, in some other cases, certain exercises, adding a bit of resistance can actually help you contract the correct muscles because you sort of put more demand on them just to be able to hold the right position straight away. So again, you got the same position. And what we would do here with the band is we just put a bit of tension on the band like this. And that already makes it a little bit easier to squeeze the glutes. So if you want to, you can get a band you can just practice tensing like this for 10 seconds. Just putting that tension on the band and letting go of it. And that already will start to give you a bit more control and awareness of the glutes. So when we went to initiate an actual rep, we just put some tension on the band, we grab the floor with our feet, and now we slowly squeeze up here. So by working this you know, external rotation here, or this ability to sort of pull the band apart with um, abduction here, that helps us to fire our glutes a bit more. A bit like in the same way that doing a, you know, working on clamshells with full prone hip extensions makes things a little bit easier. The same idea, you know, usually most people can get this right straight off the bat, and if you can use that, get that right as a foundation, and then go into your glute bridge, it can make it a lot easier to get into glutes. And remember, that's the goal with the glute bridge, is to squeeze the glutes as much as possible, and get them to do all that work in that hip extension. But again, by using these two tips, so grabbing the floor and using the band, we haven't had to resort to changing the mechanics or putting our spine into a weakened position where we can aggravate existing injuries or even create ones that we didn't have before. But we've still achieved the same goal. We've managed to squeeze the glutes and, and get more awareness and control. So next time you need glute bridges, try it. Just think, try grabbing the floor with your feet first of all. And if you still struggle, then get a band and put it around either just above or just below your knees and then just practice putting some tension on this first and then slowly squeezing up through the glutes to come up like that. And you'll find it a lot easier to get those glutes to engage and you'll find they're doing a lot more work. But again, we've, we've kept the correct, the correct mechanics for the lower spine. We haven't risked sort of further injury or, you know, at worst programming errors that will show themselves later on when we're trying to do things like squats and deadlifts and kettlebell swings.